So what we're going to do now is we're going to start talking about some strategies for learning C++. And I debated where to put this. Originally, I was going to put this section later after we talked more about C++. But I decided I would put it front and center after the overview. And the reason for this is the following. C++ is a very large language with a long history. It's been around now for 40 years or so. So it's unrealistic to think you can learn the entire thing in even a, in even a semester, much less in a month. So we're going to talk a bit about how to go about learning C++. So the, the key thing to remember through all of this, and I'll try to emphasize this as we go through the features, you don't have to know every last new feature to be an effective C++ programmer. In fact, you can get so carried away with the features that you miss the bigger picture, which is to learn how to write good code that's understandable, that's reusable, that's modular, that's efficient, and so on. And so the key point is there's lots of cool stuff. Every new release comes out with a boatload of new features and new library components, but you don't have to learn them all right away. You can learn the core ones, which we're going to focus on, and then you can flesh out the other things as the need arises. And the other thing to remember is with a lot of the later features that have been added to C++, they've really been added largely to make the job of library developers easier. In other words, being able to build lightweight, high-performance abstractions that are going to be easy to use, but perhaps hard to build. And so a lot of the features that were added more recently are there to make library developers' lives easier, not necessarily for use by the run-of-the-mill application developers. And I probably shouldn't say run-of-the-mill. I should say the ordinary person writing programs in C++ doesn't necessarily have to master developing very sophisticated libraries using generic programming and advanced template metaprogramming techniques and so on. They simply know how to, have to know how to use those features to write good programs. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this class. Of course, from time to time, we will also look at the cool new features, but I don't want that to be distracting from the key points. Another way to think about being effective with C++ is, is learn C++ from the point of view of being a better software developer. And good software developers have certain traits. One thing, a, a good software developer is very conscious about writing code that will be relatively easy to understand. They're focused on good design and good architecture. They're focused on good documentation. They're focused on good testing trying to make their systems robust so they don't leak memory. And again, you don't want to be the guy or the, the gal who uses every cool new feature and writes code that's impenetrably hard to understand. That doesn't benefit anybody really in the long run. So when we talk about things like patterns, it'll be particularly important to think about that. And that's the next topic. So we're going to be focusing a lot on patterns. We'll be looking at the Gang of Four book and those patterns because they're very, very relevant for C++. And then we're also going to spend some time looking at some newer patterns, or perhaps idioms is a better term, or what they call guidelines, which are basically a synopsis of best practices that are documented by the key players in the C++ community, including Bjorn Strustrup, who's the inventor of C++, Herb Sutter, who's worked for decades now, I think, at Microsoft, doing lots of cool things with C++, and he runs some of the committees that standardize the language. So People are trying to make it so that you can learn how to be effective as a C++ developer without shining in the black art of mystical, uh, obfuscated C++ code. Also important, learn C++ gradually. This kind of reiterates what I said before. You don't have to know every last detail to write good programs. In fact, most good programs can be written with knowledge of things like templates and classes and um, exception handling, right? Those are the key things that you need to know. And everything else becomes a nuance that's important in the details, but maybe not that important at the design phase. So the key point of all this stuff is you don't have to master everything in order to get started. We're going to take this thing one at a time. 